بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ہوپ اینڈ آئی پری دیٹ یو آل آر ویل ایٹ دیئر ہوم یور ہومس اینڈ یور فیملیز آر آلسو ویل اینڈ ان فائن ہیلتھ ویلکم اگین اگین دن کوسٹ ہیٹل از دا انگلش پوئٹری ایٹین ٹو نائنٹین سینچری and uh, this course is uh, uh, for uh, both uh, programs to be sonars and the m english and the course code is engl3123 uh, i'm shahzadi samra and the lecture is the second second lecture okay the topic of our Uh, lecture the topic are, is poem written by Wordsworth lines composed on Tintin Abbey or also known as Tintin Abbey as in our previous lecture I told you about the uh, romantic era the characteristics of the romantic era and um, the characteristics of romantic literature and the biography of uh, Wordsworth uh, then the themes of his poetry Uh, so today we are uh, going to uh, study about uh, we are going to read the uh, Tintin Abbey poem or also known as the lines composed on Tintin Abbey uh, uh, written by Wordsworth. First of all the introduction of the poem is that uh, basically this poem was written in 1798. Uh, it was mm, although written in the 1798 but uh, uh, it was all the idea of this poem was already in the his mind uh, when he visited the place the banks of the oi uh, in uh, 1793 at that time he was quite inspired uh, by the uh, scenery of the tinted abbey and uh, he was revisiting this abbey Uh, this place and uh, on his revisit he is writing this poem he is describing the scenery of the abbey uh, this abbey is a, a real life abbey which was abandoned in 1536 and uh, situated in the south welsh uh, country okay uh, south welsh means uh, it is situated in south welsh okay uh, it is a spiritual autobiography basically uh, how the spiritual autobiography because uh, 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 Wordsworth he writes about his own experience that what he felt uh, in what he felt about the scenery and what he felt when he first visited this place and what he is feeling uh, when he visited this place after five years in 1798 the year of the French Revolution as well so that's why it is called the spiritual autobiography because in this poem he felt a connection with the nature and he realized that nature has a connection with the divine power as well so that's why it is called the spiritual autobiography the poem has its roots in history how it has its root in hi- roots in history as uh, the age it began uh, it became from the reason and the logics then moved on to feelings and thoughts and uh, that is the romanticism and then to pantheism and mysticism uh, i forgot to tell you about the pantheism in the uh, previous lecture pantheism is a belief that uh, god is present in everything so wordsworth was the kind of person who who, ha, ha, who had this belief and uh, he uh, wanted everyone else he wanted to justify this thing and uh, he is uh, justifying the thing in this poem so the pantheism basically uh, a belief a belief uh, uh, that god is uh, basically it is a realization of god that god is omnipresent god is present in the every particle of the universe so you may say the philosophy of the wordsworth is the pantheism and mysticism also relevant to the spirituality uh, our uh, the inner our, uh, self and about the divinity uh 
then comes again the realization of god so this is a uh, short introduction of the poem that uh, when was it it was written about uh, which uh, place it is uh, and uh, which uh, kind of, what kind of philosophy has uh, discussed in the poem moving on is the style and structure of the poem uh i'll attach uh, uh, the uh pdf file the where you can find the text of this poem it is a quite long text and it is uh, of more than 100 uh, verses or lines that uh, i was unable to put uh, the text in the uh, slides that's why i didn't and uh, so the style style of the uh, and structure of the poem is quite confusing it is tightly structured uh uh and uh, uh it is written uh, blank verse and uh, written in the verse paragraph instead of stanzas uh uh so the, the blank verse uh, it basically is unrhymed lines in a big pentameter so it is the kind of structure of the uh, format of the poem and uh, <clears throat> uh, it is the kind of also a dramatic monologue and the conversational poem the language of the poem is quite simple and plain and uh, vivid as we uh, talked uh, in the previous lecture as we all also told you in the previous lecture that uh, the romantics they believed uh, uh, in the use of the simple language uh so uh, this poem is uh, like a, a monologue uh, imagine imaginative is spoken by a single speaker uh, to himself and uh, it is referencing towards the specific objects of the imagery or the scene uh so um, the uh, he's that's why he is using quite simple language so that the people may or the reader may understand it well now come towards the themes of the play the theme sorry poem the themes of the poems are the themes of the basically they uh, like i told you oh, the themes of the uh, words of poetry so those themes are also the um, the present here the influence of nature the power of human mind the childhood or the past memory i've already elaborated these uh, points in the previous lecture that how the nature has influence on influenced him and the power of human mind that uh, it is relevant toward the emotions reflected in tranquility and how mind human mind can convert raw material into poetry so he is also referring towards the past memory his childhood or his personal experience i have already discussed these themes in detail uh, in the previous lecture moving on to the explanation of the uh, poem okay uh, for the ease i have divided the uh, this poem into five section a section is describing something and uh, the portion that is uh, in the um, uh, that is uh, uh, like uh, in the brackets uh, this portion it is describe uh, it does uh, describe the uh, you may say the whole uh, uh, crux of the section so the first section it is uh, about uh, the meditation and uh, it appeals to the sense of hearing meditation what is meditation uh where more yoga the term yoga is quite common these days and quite famous these days so the meditation is a kind of yoga in which you try to reconnect uh with your surroundings with your inner self and uh, in first very first uh, you uh, it uh, you try to uh, enhance their sense of hearing you try to listen that what is happening around you what kinds of sounds are present here so such kind of activity in the rather in buddhism they do meditation and um, you know with the uh, charm of the om word om so that is called the meditation and uh, in first section he is uh, talking about uh, he is uh, setting uh, meditation basically yeah, let me read uh, first uh, lines or uh, starting lines of the poem a uh, five years have passed five summers with the length 
of five long winters and again i hear these waters rolling from their mountain springs with a soft land murmur once again do i behold these steep and lofty cliffs okay uh, you can uh, open uh text while listening to the lecture uh cuz i cannot narrate the whole text uh that's why uh, it for your ease you can open it and you can and uh, consult with that as well so the five years have passed five summers five winters it means that he is visiting this place after five years i told you in the yeah, he visited this place when he was uh, in his boyhood like in 1793 and uh, now he after five years he is visiting this place in 1798 so there is the there a long period of five years and things changed uh, uh in the previous lecture i told you that uh, uh, because of the french revolution because of the wars uh, uh they, his philosophy changed there was a huge impact on him and uh, there was a huge impact on his philosophy uh, because of this revolution so uh in the first section he's revisiting this the natural beauty of the why feels uh why and uh, this uh, beauty fills the poet with a sense of tranquil restoration like as if he is uh, uh, again a uh, regain the sense of uh, regaining player sense of regaining in uh, uh, you, uh, you may say what uh, how can i uh, contentment you no know? when you feel satisfied when you feel complete uh, when you feel pure within yourself so that is the tranquil restoration so he is back to this uh, natural place uh, natural beauty and serenity and uh, it is still essentially the same he opens uh, uh, with the slow and dragging rhythm and uh, the repetition of the word the five all designed to emphasize the weight of the time Uh, which has uh, separated the poet from his this scene and uh, the uh, following lines they uh, uh, they provide clear picture of uh, the imagery they provide clear picture that uh, what he is uh, uh, currently seeing uh, like it was uh, there was a blend of wildness and order and he can uh, and see the entirely the natural glades and waterfalls uh, hedges around the fields of the people and uh, he can see the he could see the wreaths of the smoke that were probably coming from the hermit's uh, um, cave hermit's cave means uh, the, the the f- uh, people who travel a lot and uh, the 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 uh, the such uh, people or the such group is traveling and uh, they are resting in the some kind of cave they and um, they have uh, were, uh, they have lit the fire might be he says might be that uh, hermit is alone that traveler might be alone or there may be a group of tra- uh, travelers so this kind of uh, uh, setting he is presenting and uh, uh, he says that uh, the image he uh, present uh, he is presenting is purely of nature and uh, they evoke uh, uh, the uh, common people the life of the common people uh, in harmony with the nature the idea of uh, verse was that uh, yeah, human beings are naturally uncorrupted uh, uh, i also told you in the previous uh, that uh, how they are uncorrupted uh, in the second section this thing that human beings are naturally uncorrupted it will become more clear uh, in the previous lecture as i told you that uh, uh uh he says that human beings are naturally uncorrupted uh the things which have corrupted human beings this because the all the civilization all the uh, uh like uh, st- buildings and uh, the social norms and traditions these things have corrupted human being 
so uh, for example a child he doesn't know how how to what is a lie so when he observes his surroundings when he observe his elders that uh, if he did uh, like something else and he is telling uh, the other thing so they learn from the other people so he learns that how to hide things child automatically learns how to hide things how to tell lie so that is how the near yeah, human being gets corrupted so moving on to the next uh, section that is the uh, beginning of meditation appeals the sense of sight imaginative mind let me uh, just give you the um, okay like the text i'm um, again asking you to open the text uh, in your uh, window uh, other window or uh, you can play you can uh, open both uh, windows side by side so you can also look at the text and uh, uh, listen to the uh, lecture as well so the second section uh, is the uh, these beauteous forms through a long absence have not been to me as is a land uh, landscape to a blind man's eye but often uh often in lonely rooms in the mid the dim of towns and cities i have caught to them in hours of weariness sensation sweet felt in the blood and felt along the heart okay these beauteous forms he is talking about the uh, scenery the uh, site uh, i have uh, wrote here that it is the beginning of meditation uh, first uh, section was about the setting of the meditation and now the he is beginning the meditation the process has begun and uh, it appeals to the sense of sight and the imaginative mind as well so he is saying that uh, these beauteous forms uh, although i wasn't uh, i didn't visit this place in 5 years and i visiting this place uh, uh, after 5 years although it was a quite a long time but this scene it was never absent from my mind it was always in my mind uh, it was it is deep rooted in my mind that whenever i was lonely wherever i went and uh, whenever i felt bad this uh, has affected me and uh, this scenery has affected my whole being it has uh, uh, completely changed my mood whenever i uh, recall this scene so uh, he says that uh, this abbey it has given him the gift of tranquility uh, the, the scenery is deeply rooted in his mind and uh, uh, this scenery uh, has also cleared his mind about the sublimity of nature that uh, he is accepting the truth that how sublime nature is how it can manipulate or you may say how it can influence an, a person and how it can inspire a person so uh, he says uh, he is finding uh, <clears throat> this uh, uh, scene or nature he says that i find the sad music of humanity in this nature how the sad music of humanity because no people are busy in their lives they are busy in doing other stuff they are not uh, uh, they don't have or they don't find time to uh, uh to spend some time a uh, in the company of nature to spend some time alone they are quite busy in our their routines like uh, for example we are we are quite busy in our lives that we are not finding time to be in the company of nature if we ever want did or if you ever want to be in the company of nature we won't find such scenery anywhere in the city so uh, this is uh, the he says that uh, it is sad i feel sad for the human that he, uh, human they are losing their humanity by uh, going away uh, from the nature and the nature it keeps man alive it uh, uh, makes him uh, feel alive and it keeps the soul of a man alive 
so uh, he says that these were not absent from a, uh, from a mind like the form the mind of a man born blind uh, in he says that in the hours of weariness of frustration and anxiety uh, these things of nature used to make him feel sweet sensations in his blood and he used to feel it at the level of the impulse like uh, impulse means uh, like uh, with his heart beat and uh, rather than in his waking consciousness and through the reasoning from this point on and onward uh, he begins uh, to consider the sublimity of nature uh, his mystical awareness uh, becomes clear and uh, he uh, accepts that how the nature plays an important role in the your spiritual growth so uh, his uh, his studies nature he says uh, that i study nature with the open eyes and my imaginative mind he is looking at the scenery but he is imagining he is connecting to experiences the experience he had when he visited this place uh, in 1793 and uh, experience he is uh, having now in 1798 he is uh, making a link between tho- both experiences by his mind and uh, with the open eyes he is looking at the scenery so he says that uh, uh, he he's been the lover of the nature from the core of his ma- uh, heart and uh, with the pure mind he feels sensation of love for nature in his blood in the impulses that he uh, he says that i don't feel hell or i don't um, uh, i don't do love um, uh, nature consciously rather i do is this unconsciously it is in my blood the love of nature and the sensation uh, for the uh, of love uh, for the nature is in my blood he feels high pleasure and deep power of joy in natural objects and uh, he says the beatings of his heart are full of the fire of nature's love he concentrates his attention to the sylvan vine a majestic and word sing river basically so uh uh so i was saying that uh, he concentrated his uh, he diverted his attention towards the sylvan uh, sylvan why uh, that is the river uh, uh, oh, that was the river over there uh, and uh, uh, it was the worth thing and the majestic sight for the uh, poet whenever we visit, visit any uh a um, hill station or any northern side uh, the waterfalls how do we feel what we feel about uh, those waterfalls there is always an expression of oh, oh wow it is so beautiful we use such kind of uh, phrases whenever we, we come across that kind of scenery so he is also talking about uh, uh, the sylvan why that uh, he is and uh, all the scenery he uh, uh, he says that it is reminding me of my past visit and uh, uh, and he is also pondering over the uh, his uh, future years coming years and the present year as well he says when i visited this place in the past i was a boy i was boyish like and my response to this this scenery was also boyish like uh, now i uh, i have changed i have grown up i have become mature now i am perceiving these things differently in the past he perceived uh, he was uh, his uh, like um, on his first visit to this place uh, he bonded over the mountains by the sides of the deep rivers and the lovely streams and uh, also uh, in the past the soundings haunted him like a passion and uh, all the tall ro- tall rocks and mountains in the deep and gloomy woods were they were like uh, an appetite to him uh, they were uh, fulfilling uh, his appetite they were fulfilling his passion but at that time he was unable to understand nature enjoying nature is something else and understanding nature is something else both are different uh, uh, philosophies and both had different experiences so when he visited this place the first time in 1793 he uh, basically enjoyed uh, nature he didn't understand nature at that time 
he was just enjoying th these scenes he was uh, running uh, here uh, he was running over the mountains over the places he was enjoying the river at that time um, but he was just unable to understand the gloominess the sadness of the place as in the introduction i told you that it was abandoned in 15 uh, 19 uh, something so uh, he is feeling the sadness as well that how we are abandoning our uh, nature how we are transforming the beautiful scenery into something fixed into something concrete so he is feeling sad about it and uh, he also says that my boyish and my adulthood that time is gone now and i have become more mature i have uh, my uh, relationship with the uh, with the nature it has changed now uh, it is more deep and uh, uh, more pure, more uh, you know uh, stronger now as compared to the uh, uh, earlier visit so moving on to the next section that is the section 3 in the section 3 uh, it starts like in this section it gives uh, kind of uh, you know feelings of doubt basically okay this section starts with if this be but a vain belief yet oh it starts from this uh, so in this section he is uh, uh, saying that uh, it is a possibility uh, that reader uh, uh, he might have uh, doubts in, in his uh, mind about the sublimity of nature about the existence of god and religion and the meaning of life uh, so because of the revolution uh, or because of the uh, all the progression uh, progress that was uh, happening at that time people are becoming uh, more materialistic they were uh, 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 getting away from their religion from their beliefs uh, so uh, so he says that uh, this uh, poem can create a doubt in the reader's mind and uh, he is uh, he says uh, that's why he goes on to justify uh, how he is right and what he means uh, so uh, he's reflecting in uh, the reader's possible doubts and he's also telling uh, that how can uh, how he can go on to justify uh, these things he doubts for just a moment whether uh, the thought of the influence of nature on man or the, on the soul of the man is uh, vain. He thought that for a bit, like a reader. Like, but uh, later on, he says, I cannot go on like this. Nature has its influence. How? Uh, he says that, yet oh, how often amid the joyless daylight, fretful and unprofitable fever of the world have i returned to thee for inspiration and peace of mind uh, the theme of the poem is the influence of nature so the influence of nature the section three the uh, is justified with that that uh, nature influences man and man's mind how does it influence the human mind uh, he says uh, that uh, whenever I I am sad, whenever I feel stressed, whenever I am disappointed, I just find shelter. I find escape in the company of nature. I just uh, recall this scenery, and uh, it all it takes my worries away like uh, when it is uh, you know conception to whenever we uh, take a shower in the rain it makes us happy as if it is just taking away our all the stress all the worries so that is the same situation with the words word that he is saying that that is how nature influenced Na rain is a part of nature so uh, if uh, yeah, it can make us think that uh, by getting shower in the rain 
it can take our worries away so why can't the other things why can't the other objects of the nature can influence our human uh, can influence human mind so that is how he is justifying uh, his belief and um, uh, the river that i that was mentioned in the uh, section 2 as well the sylvan why uh, this river it has become the symbol of spirituality for the world's world basically he says that uh, this river it has our lasting influence on my mind and it is uh, imprinted on uh, in uh, imprinted on my mind and uh, he says that uh, this river it gives me the uh, sense of peace and the meaning to life river basically it flows it shows journey okay and uh, it shows a uh, river itself for holds a uh, uh, like uh, a philosophy um uh, the uh, gautam bud he also uh, gained his uh, uh, nirvana from the river uh, in the company of river so river is the is not in the poem uh, but generally it is also in the symbol of uh, spirituality symbol of peace and uh, it shows the meaning uh, to life that we have to go on we have to move on no matter what no matter if we try no matter we are if we are full if there comes any storm if there comes any obstacle a uh, no matter what happens we are supposed to go on we are supposed to flow like a river like a water in the river so uh, that is the uh, describing the uh, purpose of life or the purpose of man's life so moving on to the uh, uh, section 4 so this section deals with the flashback his personal experience and the memory okay uh, one thing mm, about the personal experience that is it is funny that wordsworth he cannot write any piece of poetry without adding his personal experience because he was because the uh, the approach of the romantics it was subjective approach subjective approach that's why they added their personal experience in their works uh, so, uh, to clarify things to the readers so in the fourth the tone of this section is quite perplexed in the serious so uh, he says that the nature gives him courage and uh, spirit enough to stand there okay uh uh it uh, gives him courage and uh, spirit uh, to stand enough and to uh, to stand there and to enjoy or uh, to uh, get player uh, from the nature Uh, so he is also you know, talking about uh, his the uh, previous experience uh, and uh, uh, about his childhood that uh, he says that uh, you know, from the earliest of his days it was the course player in his uh, boyish boy days uh, he says that those are all gone and the time uh, that time is passed and uh, it uh, all its uh, aching joys are no more or sorrows or disease ruptures they are no more they're all gone the time is pa- the time has passed uh, uh, and uh, no more or no murmur he is not sad about Uh, the uh, um, about the passing of time he is not sad about that instead he is feeling happy he is feeling content uh, because he says that i don't think uh, i lost anything in the past years uh, the time that is go- uh, that is uh, gone now i don't think i have lost anything instead i learn things he is being optimistic here and he is seeing things differently for example uh, like a common person like us uh, that good time um, of our lives we uh, lament about that we uh, get, whenever we think about those times although we get happy but uh, we become nostalgic about the uh, passing of uh, about um, 
the passing of those uh, moments or those uh, incidents that um, that made us happy so we become sad and uh, we wish for those things to come by in the future as well yeah. on the other uh, like but the worst word he is not getting sad he is not being nostalgic or uh, uh, lamenting that uh, thing rather he is being optimistic and uh, he is enjoying the uh, uh he is sorry he says that uh, i have i didn't uh, i didn't lose anything instead i have gained things i have learned uh, things and now i have of all the gifts that was given in that uh, in uh, in that time and now these things made me mature i wasn't able to hear the nature at that time or listen to the sad music of nature but i do now so he's he's not uh, lamenting uh, those things this uh, the statement of being mature and uh, that is a, that is a, a philosophical uh, statement about the development of the personality uh, it is the uh, poetic mind Uh, so he says that he is now able to feel joy of uh, the elevated thought that he is now happy that his thoughts are elevated now his thoughts have become sublime and all because of the nature his thoughts all the his thoughts has become sublime all because all because of the nature and his love for nature first he was uh, in love for nature unconsciously it was in his blood it was by impulse but now he says i am in love with nature consciously because his thing according to him the nature is a nurse for him nature is a guardian to him a guardian to his heart and uh, uh, his soul so he is finding a shelter uh, in the nature like a nurse what a nurse uh, uh, does she heals okay uh, she gives treatments to the people so he says that nature is like a nurse it uh, it helps us in the healing process it is a guide it helps us how to do things how to live our life in the guardian of the heart and soul it uh, broadens our heart it uh, make us uh, feel sympathy or empathetic to the others it, it awakens our soul it uh, awakens our mind our heart and our soul and it interconnects these things our mind our soul and our heart it inter nature interconnects these things so all uh, he is talking about the influence of the nature on him and he is quite happy about it he is happy about it and uh, uh, now he says that he is consciously in love nature in uh, he has become a thoughtful lover of the meadows the woods and the mountains his ears and eyes seem to create the other half of all these sensations and the nature is the uh, actual source of these sublime thoughts then that all these things the uh, whatever he is listening whatever he is saying all because of his ears and uh, uh, and his eyes all the sensation but the thoughts uh, he is uh, uh, able to put in words these are because of the nature the actual source of these thoughts is the nature he is uh, giving all his uh, all the credit to the nature for his uh, work so uh, that is how he was in, how much uh, we can see that how much he was influenced by the nature so moving on to the uh, last section of the uh, this poem section 5 uh, the language of this section is the more religious and um, that it moves from the aesthetics of the nature to the towards the religion of nature that religion nature is a guide and uh, uh, it guides us to, and religion does the same religion guides us to live life nature does the same so these final uh, lines are he addresses these lines to his sister and uh, he passes his uh, vian 
to his sister okay the name uh, younger sister uh, her name is dorothy and uh, he uh, there was uh, uh, a uh, tragedy in the family so uh, all the sisters all the siblings they got separated but after quite years uh, he was um, uh, he got or he got the chance to uh, be with his sister so uh, they remained together after that so he is uh, uh, addressing the final uh, uh, lines uh, to his sister that whom he blesses and gives advice about what he has learned you know, from all these things from all the nature he says that uh, he can hear the voice of his own youth when he hears her speak in the language of his former heart he can also read my former player in the soothing lights of thy wild eyes uh, he is uh, addressing his, uh, his sister that uh, by uh, looking at her i can recall my own uh, 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 my own uh, younger years i was like her i was totally like her the way she is enjoying in uh, uh, the nature without understanding it she is just uh, getting pleasure from it and uh, the a uh, passion in his eyes i can feel that i can read those things i can read that language <clears throat> so he is uh, excited to look at uh, to look at his own youthful image in his in her in his sister he says that uh, <coughs> sorry he says that nature nature has never betrayed his heart and th- that is why they had been living from joy to joy nature can impress the mind with quietness and beauty and feed it lofty thoughts and the previous section the sublime thoughts uh, that no evil tongues of the human society can corrupt their hearts with any amount of contact with it uh, uh, so he wanted her sister to experience uh, uh, the things that uh, he is experiencing now and uh, yeah, in the uh, lines he says that when i'll be long go- gone uh, i wish that uh, she may visit this place and uh, uh, she can, uh, may remember the experience and uh, she may feel the same that what i'm feeling now after all the all these years so uh, he his desire this shows his desire to not not to be forgotten and remembered as the worshipper of nature and uh, the sense of mortality is also present there and because he is talking about uh, uh, um, his death and uh, he was aware of everything this shows that he was aware of everything about uh, every process of the of the nature sorry okay uh, then he begins uh, to address the moon and uh, he asks the nature to bestow his sister with their blessings uh, he, he says that let the moon shine on her solitary walk and let the mo- mountain winds blow their breeze on her uh, uh, when the uh, present youthful ecstasies are over as they did with him and let her mind become the uh, palace of the lovely forms and the thought about the uh, nature so that she can enjoy and understand a life and overcome the vexations of the living in a harsh human society so he wanted uh, that uh, she can get that player uh, from the nature like him uh, she can uh, worship nature like he does and uh, after his death so uh, the conclusion uh, it takes us cynically that uh, the back to the physical view of the uh, steep woods and uh, lofty cliffs and the green pastoral left landscape in which the meditation of the poem is happening exactly so we can uh, uh, conclude that uh, although he was romantic in nature although he was uh, uh, in love with the nature but he didn't or uh, never for uh, uh, forgot about the harsh reality or the uh, real world he never forgot about that yeah, so to conclude uh, we can say uh, we can say that he has expressed his natural feelings and about the nature's uh, superiority
Uh, we can clear that uh, he has described the superiority of nature that how the nature has influenced on uh, him and uh, how it can influence the human mind and he has explained all the serenity and inevitable ease in the com- in the company of nature and um, he talked about the peace of the soul uh, in the uh, poetry and uh, this uh, central piece can be uh, felt in all his poetry so uh, this is the beauty of the words word language which actually that we can feel uh, uh, things whatever he is experiencing that is all for now thank you for your patience and god bless you